Welcome to City Currents, a dialogue about Durango, where you're invited to join in the conversation. This time, my guest is Dirk Nelson, Durango City Attorney. Good morning, Dirk. How are you doing today? Good morning, Jose. I'm good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. So appreciate you coming by and stopping and just kind of having a little conversation with us. So could you give the residents uh, at home that are watching just a little bit of background of how long you've been with the city and kind of what is the city attorney role? That's a good question. I have been with the city going on eight years. It'll be eight years um, early in 22. Um, I uh, have been, uh, prior to that, I was in private practice doing a lot of governmental representa uh, representation of a variety of governments. So kind of been doing this a long time. Um, the city attorney, uh, not to, to get into the nitty gritty, but is appointed by council. One of the few positions that's directly appointed by council. So my primary job is to provide legal representation to the council um, and to city manager's office and to uh, staff as well. So uh, it's a wide variety and interesting uh, uh, work. Absolutely. You know, one of the things just kind of working in city government that uh, is always uh, one of those parts where you have the city manager and the city attorney both reporting to city council is developing the strong relationship. And uh, it's we're always at different types of ways, you know, when you look at it and how you're looking at it from a legal perspective and kind of we're looking at it more of a, a process perspective. Can That relationship is one that I think that's really built on trust. And so I just wanted to kind of get your uh, your take on kind of some of the things that you've seen, you know, the, throughout the history of Durango of how you continue to maintain that trust with the city manager and the council. Uh, I know it can be difficult. Well, and council's uh, five individual people, mm -hmm. obviously, and uh, different personalities. So my job is to try to represent the entirety of council, uh, not just, you know, one member of council. Again, the requirements are the council make decisions as a group. So, um, yeah, and I think over the years there's always been, uh, uh, there's, there's certainly a possibility for a tension between uh, you know, wanting to get things done and somebody pumping the brakes a little bit because, Absolutely. you know, you wonder whether that's something uh, we do. We do operate in a very regulated environment. Mm -hmm. We have a charter that allows us to do a broad, wide variety of things, but there are limits on those. Um, in terms of the relationship between the city manager and other staff mm -hmm. and myself is that uh, I agree with you. I think that, um, you know, we do try to have check-ins with each other on a regular mm -hmm. basis so that, you know, you can get a feel for what I'm working on, and I can get a feel from where your uh, your your major areas of work, and we can sort of in advance kind of make sure that we don't get ahead of each other. And I think um, I think we've done a pretty good job of that over you know in your relatively brief tenure here. I hope we have. So, <laughs> absolutely, I think we've had a, a really <coughs> good relationship and really have appreciated it. Uh, also, just one, I think, kind of uh, uh, what I would call a frequently asked question uh, that we have, especially when we have residents there uh, that are looking in, is that uh, while you can provide legal advice to the staff and the council, you really can't do that for the public. So sometimes you do get those emails that come in where they're asking for, is this, what's your legal advice on this subject or right. on this area? So would you like to touch just a little bit upon that for those that are listening that may think, oh, I'll, I'll send in a question, but let them know kind of what you can and cannot answer. Yeah, and I, and I get those from time to time, as you do, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Um, and so, uh, yeah, people do think that, um, you know, we, we are, you know, serving the public in the sense that uh, that's our job and we're trying to carry out. Uh, we're trying to get things done for the public, but yeah, and, it, and I do get those. Fortunately, they're fairly infrequent mm -hmm. in my my world, maybe more so in yours than mine, but I think you can, um, and most people quickly understand uh, when, you under, when you explain to them uh, what my role really is, who I represent. People grasp the concept that uh, lawyers have to maintain a, a, a responsibility to their client and not uh, vary from that. So my experience is that while we do get those questions. People do quickly understand um, the role I play. Sure. So just a couple of personal questions, I guess, as we kind of get to know a little bit more about yourself. First one is, how did you get into municipal law? Good question. Um, it was sort of a little bit, the way most things happen in life, a little bit accidental. I, uh, I, my primary, pra my civil practice was, I had an office in Bayfield at the time. And uh, the town found itself in need of uh, some representation. I actually first started working for uh, Town of Ignacio, which are you know the two smaller municipalities in the county. So um, I did that and then picked up other clients as we went along, like metro districts, um, library districts, you know, a variety of those kind of entities. So um, it just so happened that it created an opportunity and I found that I enjoyed it. Uh, it does allow for us to 
feel like we are doing something important, and uh, I enjoyed the work, and so that's how it sort of started happening. Uh, the, the second part uh, of that, that question, kind of one of my favorite questions that I ask everyone who comes on, is what is their music of choice? So mm -hmm. as you're looking in that genre uh, of what is it that you're driving to when you're coming into the office, or maybe just when you're on a road trip, uh, what uh, what are those? What's the song uh, okay. song of the day that's on top of mind for you? <laughs> well, song of the day. Actually, I heard that what I consider to be the greatest Halloween song, uh, Warren Zevon, uh, Werewolves of London. I think that's the best nice. Halloween song there is. Uh, Halloween season, uh, driving songs, Radar Love, uh, Golden Earring. That's got to be the greatest gotcha. driving song of all time. So that gives you a hint at what I listen to. I do um, listen to a wide variety of things. We have a great public radio station that allows you to without much effort to keep up on some newer stuff while keeping up, you know, uh, older things. I, um, I have a bucket list of a few people that I haven't seen. Um, Mark Knopfler and uh, I've never seen the Rolling Stones and so some of those uh, bands like that. So I'll give you a hint. Uh, by the way, there's an old John Sanford novel that <clears throat> I don't know if anybody reads John Sanford anymore, but his character, uh, there's two characters, it's a police novel. But they banter throughout the whole novel about the greatest rock and roll songs of all time. And at the end of it, they have a list of the 100 greatest rock and roll songs of all time. And if you haven't read it, you should. It's a funny book. And uh, I agree with, for the most part, the list that they put together. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Dirk, for stopping by. I really appreciate getting to uh, get in chat with you a little bit and uh, letting the public know a little bit more about the city attorney and the city attorney's office. So appreciate your time. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. Remember, this is a program where we want your input and questions. You can call in with your comments, show topic suggestions, and questions at 970-375-5091 or send us an email at citycurrents at durangogov.org. Be sure to join us next month for another edition of City Currents. Thanks for watching.